thanks to the recommendation of Senator Alphonse D'Amato. 47-year-old Roger Minor was one of several candidates interviewed by the Senator's Selection Committee as a possible replacement for U.S. District Judge James T. Foley, who is retiring. The President generally appoints those judges recommended by Senators from areas where vacancies exist. Minor thinks his record as a state Supreme Court Justice, Columbia County District Attorney, and Hudson City Attorney helped lead to his selection by D'Amato. Well, of course, uh, the procedure is uh, uh, kind of an involved one, but basically uh, uh, the Senator is guided by a Judicial Selection Committee, and I presented my credentials to them, and uh, I had a personal interview with them, and uh, I like to believe that uh, those credentials uh, uh, motivated them to, to make uh, the choice. Um, uh, I think they look for a variety in a, in a person's background, uh, exposure to uh, different phases of the law, uh, matters of that nature. Minor sees the U.S. District Judgeship as the cap on 26 years of involvement in law, although he does say he, like other judges, dreams of... to replace Judge James T. Foley as the U.S. District Court Judge for the Northern District. And Chris Smith reports. A packed courtroom greeted Judge Minor on the first day of his tenure on the federal bench. Over 400 friends, relatives, and dignitaries crowding around for the swearing-in ceremonies. In addition to Minor's family, political leaders like Albany Mayor Corning and Congressman Sam Stratton were on hand, as well as many of Minor's judicial contemporaries. Supreme Court Justice Edward Conway said Judge Minor should be prepared to step into the giant judicial shoes of his predecessor. Judge James Foley is convinced that his successor will do just that. I'm confident from my meetings with him and my talk with him that he's knowledgeable. And I'm fully confident that he'll, he'll fill my shoes with great competence, great industry, and be an outstanding judge in this Northern District of New York. Judge Foley assumed senior judge status in 1980, leaving open the post Judge Minor will now fill. After the greetings and the various remarks, it was time to get down to business, as Abram Minor administered the judicial oath to his son. And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform there was a standing ovation as Judge Minor ascended the bench to tell his friends and admirers that an independent and honorable judiciary is indispensable to justice in our society. Upon the conclusion of any contested litigation, there is usually a winner and a loser. My goal simply is this, that the loser leave this courtroom without the slightest doubt that justice abides here. Mr. Chief Judge, the junior member of your court is ready for duty. Judge Minor, a Hudson Republican, was selected by Senator Alphonse D'Amato and later nominated for the federal judgeship by President Reagan. Great problems and expense. <laughs> <laughs> 
children are here, Larry, Ronnie, Ralph, and Mark. As you probably know, the Northern District of Jackie, but for all of the people of New York who will be the beneficiaries of your judicial decisions. I'm extremely disappointed that I cannot attend your induction ceremony, but I have a firm, long-standing commitments elsewhere in our congressional district that I must honor. President Reagan's decision to appoint you as a federal judge in New York's Northern District is another indication that the new administration is on the right track. The federal judiciary is an extreme judicial background, your military service, your well-respected experience as a new New York State Supreme Court judge. Thank you, Judge several community service awards. It has often been stated that the law is a jealous mistress. Those of us who have served on the bench perhaps appreciate the impact of that adage more keenly than others. An ancient Greek and will continue to meet these tests. Judge Miner's many friends believe he will enrich the federal judiciary by his tenure. His qualifications are eminent. His experience is a long life's broad highway, his zealous devotion to his judicial duties, his ingrained common sense, and his unfailing humor will be a credit to the bench of the bar of the Northern District. Finally, let me say my remarks should not be interpreted as an excess of praise. I'm really delighted for you and know you'll be a credit to the federal bench. I'm only sorry I couldn't witness your father swearing you in. Stanley Mellon. I should say that I have uh, turned over uh, many letters to uh, Judge and Mrs. Minor uh, from many uh, distinguished citizens, and they all contain the same uh, well wishes and uh, acknowledgement of your uh, qualifications, Judge Minor. 
Now we come to the uh, part of the program that uh, we're here for, the investiture of uh, Judge Miner. Judge Scully, clerk of the court. Please do it, Scully. Ron Reagan, President of the United States of America. To all who shall see these presents greeting, know ye that reposing special trust and confidence in the wisdom of brightness and learning of Roger J. Minor of New York, I have nominated and by the advice and consent of the Senate to appoint him United States District Judge for the Northern District of New York and to authorize and empower I, Roger J. Miner, do solemnly swear that I will administer justice without respect to person. I, Roger J. Miner, do solemnly swear that I will administer justice without respect to persons. And do equal right to the poor and to the rich. And do equal right to the poor and to the rich. And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform. And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me as United States District Judge. All the duties incumbent upon me as United States District Judge. According to the best of my abilities and understanding. According to the best of my abilities and understanding agreeable to the Constitution and laws of the United States, agreeable to the Constitution and laws of the United States, and that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, and that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, against all enemies, against foreign and domestic, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter. Uh, on on which, which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Judge Munson, new colleagues of the federal bench, <laughs> I thank you all for coming in my life. There are many, many people deserving of my heartfelt thanks for making this day possible. To announce the name of each person would extend this ceremony to a very late hour. However, I must express my special gratitude to President Reagan for his confidence in me to Senator D'Amato, who recommended me to the President, to Senator Thurman, the Chairman of the Judiciary Committee, and to the entire Senate for my confirmation, to Deputy Attorney General Schmoltz and his staff for their assistance throughout the entire process, to Bob Fisk for his work on behalf of the American Bar Association Standing Committee on the Judiciary, to Paul Wendells, the chairman, and all the members of Senator D'Amato's Judicial Selection Committee, to Peter M. Brown and his Federal Bar Council Committee on the Judiciary, to Senator Moynihan for speaking so eloquently on my behalf before the Senate Judiciary Committee, 
and to so many of you here today, as well as others who endured questions from the FBI, the Justice Department, and the various bar committees, and who favorably commented on my personal and <laughs> My father was practiced law for 55 years and still is the finest lawyer I ever have known. My mother was unable to be here today to the friends and relatives who traveled long distances just to be with me today, especially the Steiners from Miami. To Dean Shapiro, to Professor Kopfler, who taught me the law of torts, and to the entire delegation from my alma mater, New York Law School. To our four sons and the other long-suffering family members who have shared our anxieties. Most of all, to my wife, Jack, and my late brother-in-law, Eugene Marianne, whose allegiance and friendship I shall never be able to replace. Although he was taken from us over a year ago, I feel that he somehow is here with us today. I suppose that the story of how I came to be here today began in a small village known as Porna in Central Europe shortly after the turn of the century when my father's parents decided to emigrate to the United States. Apparently, the village was located somewhere within the old Austro-Hungarian Empire where the landed gentry lived well and the rest of the people, especially the minority groups, did not live quite so well. Needless to say, the minor family did not enjoy the way of life depicted in the operators of Franz Lehar. As events on the continent later proved, their decision to leave was a very good one indeed. After settling in Hudson and opening a small grocery store, they were finally able, by 1923, to raise $100 to pay the first year's tuition. During the period I was with him, he disposed of a number of important cases including one involving those foreign athletes who wanted to be involved in that obscure sporting event here in Albany. It was in observing uh, Judge Bunsen decide that case that I came to the realization that the United States Constitution is an everyday working tool in to federal courts. I'm proud to be serving under his leadership in this court. Now, of course, everybody in this area, in this room, knows Judge Foley. He's graced his bench for more than 30 years with his wisdom and gentle manner. He has guided and advised me since the first day I appeared at this courthouse. And I appreciate his kindness more than I can say. I didn't know you were testing me that first day, though. We had lunch. <laughs> I've not had the privilege of being acquainted with Judge Port for very long, but I do know that he served with distinction as the United States Attorney prior to his outstanding service as a district judge. I'm honored to serve with him. Unfortunately, our colleague Judge McKern could not be with us today. I've seen him in action on the bench, and I can assure you that he is well entitled to the respect he has earned as a member of this court. When I took office as a justice of the New York State Supreme Court, my father advised me that the two most important qualities required of a judge our patience and understanding. <laughs> I shall continue to strive for patience and understanding. I shall endeavor to perform the tasks assigned me with vigor and dispatch, and with the certain knowledge that the litigants in every case are entitled to my very best. Finally, I
when he resigned from the Supreme Court, effective July 31st of this year, in contemplation of this day. I am sure that the day that his appointment was made by the President of the United States, the Federal District Court, and his family. However, today is the day of his life up to now. I am sure that he has many, many more great days in his life yet to come. With the appointment of the Supreme Court, that's slowly to us. It is now and always will be the great. I am sure that as a senior federal judge, he will go on at a lesser pace, I hope, for many, many more years to come, being the most admired member of the judiciary that has ever sat in this court or any court in this city. We here in Albany have been and are now very fortunate in that we have with us two of the most outstanding American public servants Judge Foley and Mayor Corn. Roger Miner, you have been sure. Thank you. Thank you very much, Judge Powell. Before I introduce the uh, two of my favorite judges, Judge Ford and Judge Foley, I think that I should introduce to this audience uh, Magistrate Foley. Catskill, New York, decided to move down closer to the Southern District, then we adopted his territory. So, <laughs> Judge Worker is out of the job in the Northern District, but he was kind enough to take that ride up to the Connecticut State Parkway and join us today. We have with us uh, Judge Henry Worker of the Southern District. Successive Jim Foley. My congratulations and my heartfelt sympathy go to Roger, <laughs> Federal District Judge. <laughs> I'm going to introduce to you a gentleman who did for me what Judge Foley has done for Judge Bynum. Were it not for Judge Horton taking senior status, and discharge and perform and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me as United States District Judge all the duties incumbent upon me as United States District Judge according to the best of my abilities and understanding according to the best of my abilities and understanding 
agreeable to the Constitution and laws of the United States, agreeable to the Constitution and laws of the United States, and that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, and that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, against foreign and domestic, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter. Uh, on which, which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. in Central Europe shortly after the turn of the century when my father's parents decided to emigrate to the United States. Satisfaction to preside at naturalization ceremonies in the state Supreme Court because I knew that my own grandparents had been received as citizens in similar ceremonies. The hopes and dreams of these new citizens for themselves and their children were reflected in their faces as they took the oath of citizenship before me. We are a nation of immigrants, and as Professor Handler has written, the history of immigration is the history of America. Although this is an occasion of joy for me, there is some sadness as well, because I must say farewell to my brethren on the New York State Supreme Court in the Third Judicial District. I've worked with them and socialized with them in our seven county district for the past six years and have enjoyed every minute of my association with them. There never was an unkind word spoken. I indicated to the senator that my state court colleagues are fully capable of undertaking any judicial function assigned to them. Of course, they're busy enough and are not looking for any new work, uh, but uh, knowing the senator's inclinations, I didn't mention that. But I shall always treasure the close bonds of friendship with my friends on the state trial bench. There is no finer group of men anywhere. My new colleagues have spoken very eloquently here today. In the brief time I have known them, they have been most helpful and considerate to me. They are an impressive group of men. I had the opportunity to spend some time with Judge Munson a short time ago. During the period I was with him, he disposed of a number of important cases including one involving those foreign athletes who wanted to be involved in that obscure sporting event here in Albany. It was in observing uh, Judge Munson decide that case that I came to the realization that the United States Constitution is an everyday working tool in the federal courts. I'm proud to be serving under his leadership in this court. Now, of course, everybody in this area, in this room, knows Judge Foley. He's graced this bench for more than 30 years with his wisdom and gentle manner. He has guided and advised me since the first day I appeared at this courthouse. And I appreciate his kindness more than I can say. I didn't know you were testing me that first day, though, when we had lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I was. <laughs> I have not had the privilege of being acquainted with Judge Port for very long, but I and with the certain knowledge that the litigants in every case are entitled to my very best. Finally, I shall ever be mindful that an independent and honorable judiciary 
is indispensable to justice in our society. Upon the conclusion of any contested litigation, there is usually a winner and a loser. My goal simply is this, that the loser leave this courtroom without the slightest doubt that justice abides here. Mr. Chief Judge, the junior member of your court is ready for duty. Thank you very much.